Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 3 of Sonic 2020. This is Waterfall Chase. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get right back into the action. Um, I like this music. I really like the music. Even when it gets drowned out. Oh. I'm gonna not boost just so we can listen to this song. It's like a, it's like a higher energy. What? It's like a higher energy composition of, uh, the stage before. Also, why did that kill me? That was a rainbow ring. Oh, maybe I got hit by one of those. I need a ring. Okay. Let me make sure I grab rings. We're gonna boost through this first part. We've heard the first part of the song, so... What what killed me? I don't know what killed me. So rainbow rings. Am I being chased? Oh, I'm actually being chased by the waterfall. So I actually have to, like, stay ahead of it by a lot. Okay. Staying on the roof might be, like... Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's make sure that we hit rainbow rings. I don't want to boost because I want to hear the song, but the waterfall is like actually chasing us in this stage. And we're like actively having to try to weave around this. Okay. Um. I don't want to say too much right away, but. I think there should be more lenience in the waterfall. In how fast it follows you. Yeah, because like... You have to actively avoid these rocks and everything too. And uh... I, I just think it comes at you a little too fast. For comfortable gameplay. Okay, now am I in the clear, or am I still being fucking chased? I want rings. Did I just pick the wrong side? What happened there? That didn't feel like it deserved death. That, that one felt like a gotcha, for sure. There's been a few of those so far that have just felt like gotcha moments. Where it's like, haha, idiot. Now I'm dead. No? I'm not dead. But yeah, I, I don't like when games have the haha gotcha kind of moments. Where it's just like, ha, idiot, you didn't know already where to go. I, I don't think those belong in games like this. They're, they're fine for, like, you know, boshy and I want to be the games, but for a Sonic platforming game, eh, I don't think so. I think gotchas are misplaced in Sonic games. Okay. I'm just dead. That's okay. We can deem that to be my fault. Where is this respawn? Okay. It was the right spot, just facing the wrong way. Ugh. It's so tricky when you don't have a ring. Ugh. 
I just realized I had my recording software up, and that is definitely causing frame drops <laughs> in the game. Boom. Okay. Oh, uh, where am I going? I'm going this way. So a little bit more guidance there would be nice. Um, I mean, again, I was able to figure it out pretty quickly, but it would be good to like tell, show your player at least where you kind of want them to go. And again, now the waterfall is chasing me again. Okay. Um, a cinematic camera to show that off would be good. One that doesn't interfere with your inputs but turns the camera to show you that the waterfall is in fact chasing you again. I'm not using the sidestep enough, I think, is part of my problem. Also, I don't know why I'm taking damage for hitting those. They're not moving. I don't think we should be getting damage for running into those. This would make a really good locked-in L1, R1 section, kind of like in Sonic Unleashed or Generations. Uh, it, it would make for a really good section like that where you're, you know, locked into, like, three tracks. But not when you still have, like, full motion control. Because I'm definitely not locked into anything here. Like, I still have full range. Just put me up on the fucking side here. Honestly. Like... Okay, and that's the end of the stage. Um, that was a very quick stage, actually. Another D rank. Of course. I knew I would be getting a D rank there. Um, now is this the end of the action stages, or do we have something a little bit more? I know it said three. Hey, Tails is right there to pick us up, and we got the Emerald. The Chaos Emerald! And that is Sonic 2020. Um, so yeah, not too bad. I actually really liked it. Um, it was fun, for sure. There are, like I said, there are some changes that I would make myself if I had the option to. Um, I d don't have somebody here to play the two-player battle, but I might try this out with a friend of mine in another video. Uh, but for the time being... I'm going to go ahead and end it there, guys. I'm going to end off with a little um, final thoughts and things like that. But, uh, yeah, for now, guys, that's the main part of the video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut into that now. So I will see you guys in that section. Okay, so my final thoughts on Sonic 2020. First off, I'd like to say, amazing game. I really, really did enjoy playing it. However, overall, I would give the game an 8.5 out of 10 currently. Um, the reason being, there's just some things about it, which I'll get into when I go over the cons, that make the game feel kind of... Uh, it feels more... 
what do you call it? It feels more indie than I think it wants to be. Um, but we're going to start off, we're going to go over the pros that I have from the game and then get into the cons. Now, even though the cons are going to seem like there are a lot, um, there's really not that many in terms of for a game that's just released and has, you know, a very small development team. As you can see on the screen, this is literally the credits of the game. So, hats off to you guys. Really well done, uh, Bolt. You guys are doing an amazing job over there. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the final thoughts now, the pros, cons, and level specific things that I have for the game. So, pros. The game is very Sonic-like. It feels like older games in terms of speed and mechanics. It utilizes new mechanics beautifully. It smoothly incorporates them into a traditional 3D Sonic feeling game. Um, it feels like a very smooth and updated Sonic Adventure 2, like I mentioned in, I believe it was episode 2. Uh, beautiful visuals and audio, the graphics blew me away, they're gorgeous, the game looks amazing. There was some frame drop issues, but I do believe that was because I had anti-aliasing turned on. I simply had that turned on for the videos. Um, so the game probably looks like it runs at a lower frame rate than 60, but that's because of anti-aliasing and whatnot. Other, other, I mean, either way, it looks beautiful. The music, incredible. I want to download the entire soundtrack. I loved it. Um, Cutscenes are above and beyond any recent Sonic game. I would almost say they're the best in the series. Um, I liked cutscenes in Sonic 06, even though they're kind of shit. Um, I also like cutscenes in Sonic Unleashed, but I do think this game is up there in terms of Sonic game cutscenes. They were beautiful. Um, the game's episodic nature allows the player to feel accomplished while still having more to satiate their hunger in the future. Because the game is being released as episodes, once you've finished Sonic 2020 episode White Jungle, you still have something to look forward to, and you still have something to go back to, because this game is incredibly fun to play leaves me wanting to play more even after completing it. After I finish recording this, I'm probably going to go back and play some of the stages again, look for sequence breaks, things like that. Um, intuitive and smooth controls makes the game feel very natural while playing. Um, I didn't have a moment where I didn't feel like the controls made sense. I felt like the engine had a couple problems, which we're going to get into right now. So, over on the other side with cons, uh, first con, movement sometimes feels too smooth and slippery to the point of being problematic to the player. Uh, this was shown a lot on the blue platforms in Tree Palace. Um, it just didn't feel right sometimes. Uh, and like when you're going on those half pipe tree sections, sometimes it really doesn't feel right when you're holding straight up and you're just like flying off the side at times. Uh, that might be a problem of the engine that can't be fixed. It might be something that was overlooked. Not entirely sure. Also, I am playing on controller. It might have been tested on keyboard and not tested on controller. So it might not be... Uh, like, clearly it, it has controller support, but it might not have been fully fleshed out for controller. Springs, launchers, and boost panels don't seemingly lock Sonic into specific paths at set trajectories and speeds, sometimes causing wonky things to happen that the player might feel is cheap. Um, there were a couple times where I would go off of a bounce pad, or off a spring, and I would just fall, like not go where I'm supposed to be going. Launcher, same thing, that one time I came off of it on a bit of an angle, and it just flew me off to the side. Boost panels also a problem uh not as much but they do sometimes cause weird things to happen and it does feel kind of cheap when you die to that uh slingshot vines sometimes don't send sonic at the right height leaving him short to a platform even with a double jump another cheap moment um that was showcased in episode one where i used the slingshot vine to try and get to the end ring um 
Now, that might not have been intended, but when you grab it, it without a doubt does throw you off the side. So I feel like it should send you far enough at the right height for you to make it with a double jump, even if you have to double jump and then boost. I feel like it should do that because it, it, it makes it seem like it's supposed to. Um, the camera sometimes doesn't position it properly when changing elevation, respawning, uh, when changing elevations or respawning, leaving the player sometimes confused for a short moment on where to go. This is purely a quality of life thing. It's not a problem for the player to have to turn the camera a little bit to see where to go. Sonic games are generally about speed, so you you want your route to be as straightforward as possible while still being non-linear, still being an adventure game. So having the camera actually turn and show where to go makes sense because if the player wants to explore elsewhere they can turn the camera you don't really want the player to have to turn the camera to find where to go in in the sense of like when you come out of a little tunnel right when you're going vertically up a tunnel and then you come up and the camera's facing the opposite direction of where you want to go or when you respawn and the camera's turned around i don't know what caused that in waterfall chase but that's one of the moments um, Sonic is able to get stuck on a lot of geometry in the game, though you can get out, this can ruin the flow for some players. Again, another quality of life thing, um, just adding little invisible walls to stop players from getting stuck on geometry, that'd be incredible. Um, because when, you, when, you, when you're like just flowing through a stage, you're vibing, you know, you get stuck, and then you're like, oh, now I have to figure out how to get out of this, and then it's like, okay, let me get back into my flow now. Uh, again, that's a very specific, just... Whatever, whatever kind of thing. Okay, so now I want to get into some level-specific notes. The blue platforms in Tree Palace feel too translucent. I think they could use with a more solid border to help with depth perception. Um, this could be a me problem. My eyes are very screwed up. I wear glasses that are nearsighted on one side, farsighted on the other. Um, so my depth perception is already bad. But I feel like the way the platforms are designed and colored... It's hard to see exactly where they are without having the camera straight down. Uh, this could be a design choice by the by the developer. Could not be. I'm not sure. The water speed in Waterfall Chase feels a bit too fast, making it hard to stay ahead of while avoiding the falling boulders. I 100% stand by this. The water in Waterfall Chase is too fast. It catches you too quickly. You fall off of boost if you go off of a little bit of a hill and you're in the air and you let go of boost or you run out of boost in midair, you are going to die. If you're trying to dodge boulders and you need to slow down to do so, you're probably going to die. If you get hit by a boulder and then don't boost right away, you're probably going to die. Um, I do feel like that's a little bit unfair to the player. The player should be allowed to make at least one mistake and still be comfortable going through that section without dying immediately. Um, and lastly, the pick a path section with water in one pipe during waterfall chase feels like a gotcha moment the first time through. If you pick the wrong one, there's little to no visual confirmation of where to go. Uh, just two lit up rings. I would recommend advising the player better. Even if you just have a little sign that points to the left, like one of those little flying signs with like the, the little helicopter signs from like Sonic Adventure 2, I believe, uh, that points to the left. Or even if you had water rushing down earlier, that would be incredible to add in so that players can see what's going to be happening. And lastly, the second section where the water is chasing you in Waterfall Chase, I feel like there should be some indication telling you that it's chasing you again. As far as I could tell, there was no audio for it, and the camera never kind of like took a glance at it. It could be a camera thing. It could be an Omo Chow. You could do it in many different ways. Um, again, I don't know if the developer is looking for feedback to change up level design at all. They might not be. They might be. So that's why I'm giving my, my two cents here. But anyways, guys, overall, like I said, good solid 8.5 out of 10 for Sonic 2020 episode White Jungle. Very happy with the game. I had a lot of fun playing it, and uh, that's about all I have to say for today. So with that, guys, I will see you all later. Have a great day, 
Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not currently subscribed. Leave a comment if you have something to say and leave a like if you liked the video. But other than that, guys, have a great day.